Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Melissa, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is the first video that you're watching from my channel, welcome. I'm so excited that you're watching this. I make Christian videos here on my channel every week. I have a video series on my YouTube channel called Bible Study With Me, and this is basically a series that does what it says. I basically pick a chapter of the Bible and I study it with you guys using the SOAP method. Before we get into the video, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, and if you guys ever have any prayer requests, you can DM me on there. Today's Bible study is going to be from 1 Corinthians. I actually just finished reading the book of Romans and I absolutely loved it. Like, oh my word, it was so incredible. I would definitely say that it's one of my favorite books in the Bible, definitely. So after I read Romans, I asked God and I was like, what book should I move on to? And I really felt like the Holy Spirit was guiding me to just continue and to read from 1 Corinthians. So today we're going to be studying 1 Corinthians chapter 1 together. I have an exciting surprise for you guys that I've been working on and I'm so excited to announce this. I basically made a soap by Bible study method printout for you guys. It's completely free. I will link it down below in the description box and you guys can download it and use it as well. So basically the first page describes like what each of the letters mean. And then there's about like 10 pages that have the soap letters here where you can write your answers for them as well. So this is just a really handy printout that you guys can print out and just use in your quiet time with God. I just thought that something like this would be helpful because sometimes people don't know what the soap method is. And it's also really cool to just have a printout out to stick in your journal or just to do with your friends or whatever. So again, I will link this down below. I'm so excited about this and I'm going to be using this in this video. But anyways, let's get on with the Bible study. So today I'm going to be reading from my Jesus Bible and this is an NIV Bible. So the first letter in the SOAP method is S and it stands for scripture. So like I said before, the scripture we're going to be reading today is from 1 Corinthians and it's chapter 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write that next to the S. So I'm going to read this chapter with you guys. Feel free to follow along and get your Bible as well. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sostenus. I'm really bad at pronouncing their names. To the church of God in Corinth, to those who sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus, for in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his Son Jesus Christ our Lord. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are some quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul, another I follow Apollos, another I follow Cephas, still another I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I did not baptize any of you except Crippus and Gaius. So no one can say that you were baptized in my name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. Where is this wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is this philosopher of the age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. 
It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. So I know that was a pretty long chapter, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go back and skim read it again and then highlight with my highlighter anything that really stands out to me. Because the next letter in the SOAP method is O, and that stands for observation. So really be thinking about now what you can observe from what you just read. So I just read over it once more and I just thought about what I could really observe and now I'm going to write it down next to the O. So the things that I wrote down on my sheet was firstly, God is so much bigger than we know and I kind of observed this from... Uh, chapter 1 verse 25 where it says for the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength and I just thought that was really cool because like the weakness of God is stronger than human strength like I don't know to me that just shows me like how big our God is that he is so much bigger than we even fathom I think sometimes we can have an idea of like how big and like amazing God is but like in comparison to how amazing he actually is it's like probably nothing secondly I said Paul was talking to a church divided so I kind of observed that from verse 10 where Paul is saying like um, I want all of you to agree with one another and what you say and that there be no divisions among you but that you perfectly be united in mind and thought. It sounds here like the Corinthian church were quite divided in what they believed and who they were worshipping and I was kind of talking about this today in my class online because I'm currently doing university online and I had a pastoral care class and we we're talking about forgiveness and how although the church is united there's still so many divisions among us like whether that is our theology or our different doctrines like like, there's still so much division but I think it is really important to try our hardest to be um, of one mind. And then thirdly I wrote that God uses us and I wrote this because in verse 27 Paul is talking about how God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise, God chose the lowly things of this world um, to nullify the things that are. So here it's talking about that God actually chose the foolish, he chose the weak, he chose the lowly. And I just think it's amazing how God can use every single one of us, even our weaknesses and insecurities, which is actually insane. And thirdly is the A in SOAP, and this stands for application. So let's just read back over this chapter again and just really think about what we can apply to our lives from what we just read. So for the A, I kind of just looked at what I wrote for observation and I kind of thought about how I could apply that to my life. So firstly, I wrote, be confident in God using you and those around you. A lot of the time I look at my past, I look at my insecurities and I'm like, how is God going to use this for good? But I think it's so important to uh, really know and be confident in the fact that God will use those things and I want to become better at that because God has shown me that so many times. Like, like he has used things from my past to help somebody else and it's just blown my mind and he just continues to blow my mind in that. So I want to be more confident in that. I also wrote, be confident that God is using those around you. And this kind of links in with the second thing that I wrote which is be of one mind. There are so many different Christians in the world, so many different Christians that believe different things, that preach different things. You know even the Bible study that I did today like what I got from it is going to be completely different to what you got from it probably. Like some of it might be the same but I bet some of it is different. I don't want to judge those around me because God can use everybody. So I want to make sure that I'm being of one mind with my brothers and sisters and those who are around me and try not to judge them um, but to love them and to cause no divisions but to cause love. Again, that's easier said than done, especially if you're so passionate about something and that person doesn't believe what you believe. But I still think it's important that love should be the first and foremost thing that we do in every situation. And then lastly, I wrote, recognize that God knows best. So obviously this chapter is talking about how big and how incredible our God is and I just want to remember that like God really does know best in my life, that he is way bigger than my circumstances. I'm stuck in self-isolation right now, but like I know that God is using it for good. Sometimes I may feel crappy, but like I just want to remind myself that like God has a bigger purpose to this than I know. And lastly, the P stands for prayer and soap. So I'm going to pray with you guys and I encourage you after this video to just spend a moment in prayer and just ask God to help you with the things that you wrote for applications so that you can apply them to your life. So let's pray together. And again, if you ever have any prayer requests, feel free to DM me on Instagram. So dear Father, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you so much that I could do this Bible study with all the incredible people watching this video. And Lord God, I just pray for all of us that you can help us to really apply those things to our life that we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 today. 
Help us to continue in showing love. Help us to cause no division, but to be of one mind with those around us. Help us to recognize that you are truly way bigger than we could ever know and to recognize that you know best for our lives. Lord, help us with self-isolation. Help us to really feel your joy and peace and the assurance that you have uh, something so amazing that's going to come out on the other side of this isolation. We love you, Jesus, and we pray this in your name. Amen. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. I challenge you guys to comment down below what you got out of this chapter. Also, don't forget to print out the SOAP Bible study method. It'll be linked down below. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!